Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving back into generative AI, this time with the AI Comic Factory. I'll be trying out five scenarios that I planned ahead of time to see how they turn out, whether we'll get any consistency between panels and coherence in the story. So let's dive in, and I am talking about the model using demo on Hugging Face. If I remember correctly, this is based on Stable Diffusion, which you can download for free, and host on your own server. That's what the .com and .net versions on Google are here. So let's go over what we've got here. At the top left, we've got two drop-down menus. The first of which lets us choose an art style. American, Japanese, 3D, Egyptian. The second lets you choose your layout. Basically how many panels we want. This option here lets you choose whether you want captions to be part of the comic. I have yet to see anyone leave it turned off. Finally, we've got another style prompt to the right here. I think this is just an additional detail on top of the preset we've chosen. Before doing the recording for this video in OBS, I did export a couple results I got for a Simpsons comic I wanted to generate, where they travel to another realm of existence. I was going for something like that Three House of Horror episode where Homer ends up in the real world, but these were a little off to say the least. The one on the left was made in 3D, and the one on the right was American model. Now to be fair, The Simpsons aren't existing characters with their own designs, mostly intended for that style of animation. DataEconomy.com suggests describing not only the characters of the scene, but also the setting, the actions taking place, and any other details that might be relevant. So let's have a go and try and make something serious. The first prompt here will be if a female superhero in a glowing aura swoops down in a stormy city to rescue the young child from a sinister looking villain. Preset will be American modern with some additional style, illustrated with bold lines, dynamic poses and vibrant colours typical of contemporary American comics. Just to note, when you export the PDF, it doesn't include the caption and I'm not sure if that's just a bug on my end or a setting I'm missing. In the heart of the city, a sinister force strikes while a heroine is here to save the day. I'm really struggling to make these out, and ironically enough, I actually had a night test today while writing this. Anyway, the evildoer has his sights on innocence, but will stop at nothing to bring him to justice. And then our heroine changes her race completely because she's AI generated. Evil will not stand in our way. Justice has been served for now. You could excuse this by saying this is actually three different superheroes working in a team, and there just aren't enough panels to introduce them. Are we sure the little girl and the villain aren't related? They seem to have the same weird hands. Her feet aren't doing any better either. Maybe she's practicing her new roar, and her father is cheering her on. At a first glance, I thought this girl had Spider-Man powers and the little girl is holding her waist, but it turns out what looks like a web is actually a peculiar cloud formation. And the little girl seems to be flying too, as she's not actually holding on to anything. Let's move on to the next one. A brave knight in shiny armour faces an emerald dragon breathing fire in a medieval village, as villagers watch. Medieval, and the style we've got, depicted with intricate line work, ornate detailing, and muted. Earthy tones, reminiscent of illuminated manuscripts. Sir Galahad, faith protector of Kaldor, stands ready to face the dragon's wrath. The fierce dragon ravages the land, sending Kaldor's villagers into a frenzy. They dare not approach the beast, but Sir Galahad won't hesitate. Sir Galahad, steadfast in his duty, charges towards the dragon with the sword, something. The best unleashes flames and uh, rocks him apart bit by bit. Will the knight's fella be enough to save Kaldor? And then this one's blank. Guess nobody has anything to say after that. Something about this reminds me of Monty Python, I don't know why. I don't know if this is meant to be text on a scroll or something, but the AI is so bad that it just looks like some random scribble. This one has a bunch of AI zombies crowded together with claws of hands. I assume that's meant to be the crowd at a distance, but it looks like cobblestones. Over here we have trees blending into the grass. I'm having a hard time telling Sir Galahad and the dragon apart. Is that guy part of the dragon? Where's his arm? Where's his armour? Because it definitely appears back here, to which you can see the horse trying to cover feel. Thing is, this is partly on me for expecting the captions to appear on each PDF, and it's not like part of the image either. You can literally highlight it in copy and paste. Alright, a space explorer in a futuristic suit and a small robot interact with friendly 
blue-skinned aliens on a vibrant, floating island planet. 3D render as the preset and created with realistic 3D modeling, detailed textures and a high definition rendering. I decided to change up the layout for this one just to see if having extra panels gave a smoother transition between the narrative. But from a glance it doesn't seem to look any different in that regard. So what we got here? Captain Jayon? Ready to land on the floating island. No geez, here we go. Jayon's suit is formed on a crimson hue and streamlined slim slider waterfalls. The blue skinned aliens who something. The land appears to be an intelligent and hospitable race. They communicate through a series of clicks and whistles. Jayon tests his suit's transportation technology and it translates his language accurately. Jayon thanks the aliens and lead him through the dense foliage of the island. Next floating island planet day? Well that was hard. And then the next panel just says welcome commander. Once again I have no idea who's who. I'm going to take a wild guess and say that the robot mushroom thing on the far right panel is either his ship or the alien species. The images themselves seem fine, I guess, in isolation. Look at that cute little fella. A determined high school student confronts gossiping classmates in a hallway to defend their anxious friend standing behind them. We'll choose Franco Belgian as the art style, and for the additional style we'll have drawn in a clean, expressive style with clear line art and vibrant, flat colours typical of Franco Belgian comics. Karen stands against three classmates' gossip. Karen defends her anxious friend. The truth will set you free. Karen won't tolerate bullying. Looks like this is an actual text, but random AI slop in a speech bubble. And the last one just says Karen won't back down. Why is there a stuffed teddy bear fox in the first panel? The drawing on the second panel is pretty good, but it's pretty different. Everyone seems to be outside all of a sudden. It's not quite black and white, but definitely not coloured, if that makes sense at all. These people in the third panel look like characters from Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. And oh geez, the people in the bottom panels don't look any better. Sometimes you'll see characters make that face for comedic value in some anime, but in this context and art style, it just looks like a total mistake. The character to the right looks like she belongs on a gorilla's album cover. Let's move on. A young mage with a staff rides a griffin through an enchanted forest while an old wizard casts a protective spell below. Japanese, illustrated with dynamic compositions, expressive characters and intricate backgrounds in the style of Japanese manga. Lyra, a mage from uh, Eastern Reeling, Roig, her beloved griffin into the mythical forest while keeping her spells at the ready. Again, this isn't AI. This is just me not remembering to note down the captions before closing them. The wise old wizard, Xander, totally not Gandalf, ensures safe passage for Lyra. She embarks on her latest adventure. With a flick of his wand, not Gandalf strengthens Lyra's spell, earlier preparing her for any obstacle in her path. As far as character consistency goes, this is probably the closest, with the exception of Gandalf's age regression on the bottom panel. I'd put that down to the art style more than anything. The art is actually pretty good. I can't see any errors here. I can't see what all the feathers are doing at the back there, but that's whatever. In conclusion, do I think that it's worth hiring legitimate artists over? <laughs> well, no. And I'm sure the creator Julian Bleak didn't intend it to be used that way either. At the end of the day, this is basically stable diffusion repurposed for creating a comic book. It's fun to play around with, but I'd wager that if you were to see a comic with the incredible quality that claims to be made with AI, it probably had a lot more done to refine it that you're probably seeing. But if you did enjoy what I had to say in this video, I would very much appreciate a like and a subscribe. And as always, I hope you all have a wonderful week, and thank you very much for watching. Bye now.